Chances are, many of you watching this video either have or know someone who has been affected by cancer. By the end of 2020, over 200,000 Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer, with a predicted 83,000 deaths. Today's cancer treatments help save and prolong the lives of our loved ones. Unfortunately, this comes at the expense of multiple rounds of varying treatments and many side effects. Surgery, chemotherapy, and external radiation therapy are conventionally used to treat cancer. These therapies are often used in combination to achieve the best targeted results. Surgery is used to remove tissue that may become cancerous or for early stage breast or skin cancer. Surgeons must remove a small amount of healthy tissue around the cancer to ensure that no cancerous cells have been left behind. Moreover, cancers that are too big too small, have spread throughout the body, or are located in difficult to reach places, pose significant challenges for surgeons. Chemotherapy is another commonly used therapy to treat cancer. This treatment uses drugs that target cancer cells by slowing their growth and eventually killing them. These drugs can be administered into the patient's vein or taken orally. This treatment can be tailored to each individual's age, weight, and blood cell counts. Unfortunately, chemotherapy drugs are unable to distinguish between the fast-growing cancer cells and the cells that naturally grow rapidly in your body, like your hair cells. This means that your entire body and all of its healthy cells are also exposed to these chemotherapy drugs. External radiation therapy uses radiation in the form of gamma rays, which will be discussed in more detail later on. A beam of radiation can be targeted to the location of the body which has cancer. Repeated exposure to the radiation causes the cancer cells to slowly shrink and die. Unfortunately, with this therapy, healthy cells also come into contact with the radiation beam. Because both external radiation therapy and chemotherapy do not specifically target cancer cells, patients often feel nausea, have a loss of appetite, hair loss, and skin problems, to name a few. You may begin to ask what new drug technologies are being developed to help combat cancer. Many medical experts believe the future of cancer treatment lies within radiopharmaceuticals. To discuss this novel treatment, let's first dive into what is radiation. Radiation is all around us. It is released from cell phones, the sun, airplanes, and even the bananas on your kitchen counter. Keep in mind, these emit minimal to low levels of background radiation and are totally safe. But what exactly is radiation? Radiation involves an atom, like the potassium in your banana, which has an unstable nucleus or center. This unstable and radioactive atom is known as a radionuclide and has a lot of energy. To regain the atom's stability, different energies known as radio waves or radiation are released. The time it takes for an atom to become stable varies for each type of element and can span from seconds to years. This is known as radioactive decay, which is measured in half-lives. There are three different types of radiation, or radio waves, which vary in intensities and therefore their applications. Alpha particles are the first type of radio wave. These particles cannot travel very far, but give off lots and lots of energy. Beta particles can travel a little further with a little less strength. Gamma rays can travel the furthest with the least amount of strength and can pass through most materials including the human body. When each of these forms of radiation encounter cells, they destroy the cells by damaging its DNA. While all three of these types of radiation can be applied to cancer treatments, we can target cancers using alpha or beta particles because inside the human body they cannot travel very far and are strong enough to destroy cells. By studying various cancer cells and their specific characteristics, we can design radioactive drugs known as radiopharmaceuticals that target very specific cancer cells and only those cancer cells. Yes. Each cancer will require a different and specific drug, but this is also what makes it so specific to only destroying cancer cells and not healthy cells. One example of radiopharmaceuticals is targeted internal radionuclide therapy. These can be injected into a patient's vein and travel through the bloodstream.
How does it work? The outer layer of a cell is called the cell membrane. The membrane contains proteins called receptors that receive signals from molecules when they bind to it. Once the correct molecule binds to its receptor, it causes a response in the cell. Think of this like a key, which is specific to only one lock. If the incorrect key is used to try to unlock the door, it doesn't work. To give an example, prostate cancer cells have a receptor on their cell membrane called a prostate-specific membrane antigen receptor, or PSMA. If we can make a drug molecule that could attach to this receptor on the outside of the cancer cell, we can deliver a dose of radiation directly to prostate cancer cells, killing them while sparing healthy cells. By incorporating beta particles, which can only travel small distances, only the cells nearby receive a toxic dose of radiation. Radioactive lutetium-177, for example, is commonly used as it can only travel 1.4 millimeters. For very small tumors, alpha particles like actinium-225 are better suited than beta particles. This targeted drug treatment has fewer side effects than the traditional therapies mentioned previously, as fewer healthy cells are dosed with radiation. Because it is so targeted, this also means lower dosages are needed to achieve the same effect of conventional external radiation therapy. One example is a drug being developed to treat stage 4 prostate cancer which has spread or metastasized in the body. The need for better treatment options cannot be emphasized enough as stage 4 of this type of cancer has about a 28% 5-year survival rate. If you take a look at scan A, you can see a whole bunch of small black dots. These are prostate cancer cells that have spread throughout the body. After multiple doses of the radiopharmaceutical given in the vein, you can slowly see the cancers, or black dots, disappear. With each treatment, the dosages also decrease. Many of these radiopharmaceutical drugs are still in clinical trials around the world or are awaiting FDA approval. To replace conventional cancer treatments, we need a sustainable radioisotope source or production method, which in some cases can be difficult to produce on an industrial scale. Furthermore, of the drugs that are FDA approved for use, many are not covered by insurance companies and cost thousands of dollars for the patient. Many of these drugs, although undergoing clinical trials in Canada, are not available in the Canadian market as of yet. To get involved with any clinical trials underway in Canada or to become more informed, visit canadiancancertrials.ca. Overall, radiopharmaceutical treatments provide an effective alternative for hard-to-treat cancers with high fatality rates. Targeted internal radionuclide therapy provides hope for future cures and treatment options. For more information about the application of radiopharmaceuticals, check out our video where we catch up with Dr. Armstrong from the McMaster Nuclear Operations and Facilities.